guys, this is Ashley with Real People Painting, and today we're going to be drawing hands using two different complementary color schemes with colored pencil. Specifically, I should say, uh, Prismacolor colored pencils. Today, I figured we would do hand drawings just because hands are hands are really expressive. Like, you know, all the muscles, everything moving and whatnot. So many different positions you could put a hand in. And hands tend to be really, really difficult for even experienced artists. Similarly to like how it would be drawing a face and, you know, maybe like girls doing makeup, it's harder to match one eye to the other eye, etc., etc. So, I figured today I got went out and I bought a hand model, which I mean, it's like it's so annoying because it's like it doesn't it doesn't move. It's wooden, so you know. Um, I could have probably found a better hand model, but um, so today we'd be drawing like I'd probably say about three different poses. Um, and my goal today isn't just about drawing the hands, but also I figured I would end up adding some um, highlights and some shadow so that you could see with different colors. So today I'm gonna to be focusing on complements, which on the color wheel, they're colors that are opposite of each other. And complementary colors are nice to use because firstly, they, they purposely clash. They're polar opposites of each other. So artistically, the warmer colors are gonna advance, the cooler colors are going to be receding. And that means that, so like, I think the first two colors I have out, I've got red and green, which are opposites. So I've got red is gonna be the ones that are gonna be in like the highlights in the foreground and the green is gonna be in the background. It's gonna add shadow. And it's meant to be like, you know, extreme. Oh my goodness. I, <laughs> I was having so many like problems with all of my color pencils earlier. I was trying to sharpen everything and nothing was cooperating. Um, so if you're looking for colored pencils, you're going to want to look for quality, of course, partly because the color on the inside, um, higher quality colored pencils aren't going to break as easily. Not to say that they won't, because if you're going to be like manhandling the colored pencils, the lead inside is going to shatter. So when you go to sharpen them, they're just going to keep falling apart. So be nice to your colored pencils and get good ones. Um, so even though I'm going to be going over it with color, I'm going to start out with pencil just because it's a little bit easier. And none of these are meant to be like, fine art hang up in your bedroom kind of artwork but I figure if we're gonna be going at it like sketchy this would probably be the way to go so oh my goodness let's see here starting out I, I set this up I had actually given it something to hold well it's kind of boring on its own without holding anything um, also anything you can see kind of like the way that your hands gonna hold something like the weight of it it's not perfect because it's wooden and it's junk but <laughs> Other than that, it kind of works. So when you're drawing a hand, uh, just like if you were to be drawing any other object, you're going to kind of map it out visually. So you're going to look for areas to kind of relate back. So I see like the pencil is actually a really good technique when it comes to drawing something. If you have something straight, you're able to kind of compare it against other things a little bit easier. So usually when I draw a hand, I start out at the bottom. I know like you know the wrist there's like sometimes people will actually imagine the way that the model is there's like a ball in here so everything is kind of hinging around it so I'll start out down here and I usually kind of have a little bit of an angle to it and I'll come up along the side just so I know where I'm going I hate this wooden model. All right, so coming up along the pencil, it's going to go right across here. And since I'm going to want to go over this with colored pencil afterward, I'm not really worried about what's going to show through, like the pencil and underneath. Mm, let's see here. So this is going to come up around here. And with any digit, especially, it always kind of like wraps around. It helps with depth and dimension. A nice thing too about the wooden model is you actually get to you get to see like the the joints in here a little bit better. So if you were drawing this 
on your own or if you're drawing it actually from like a regular hand you don't really have that dimension that you know direction that you would have with these because you can see exactly which direction these are going in so if I'm drawing it and I include where it rounds at the uh, top of the joint then you can see a little better where I'm going with it so it is good for practice and that's what you know I mean it's meant for practice obviously so uh, let's see here now this thumb laying on top of the other one so this comes out here. And I know that I can see a little bit more of the hand behind it, but none of the finger above it. So I'll pull my thumb out a little bit further. And it kind of pops up right here. Now if I'm mapping all of this out, which I'm not doing an awesome job of mapping right now, I probably sketch over here. I see that the fingers kind of come down a little bit, but they overlap. A little bit right here and then I only see a tiny bit of the pinky over here the finger itself I see a little bit more of so, okay. notice that I'm not focusing on one part of it and I'm just kind of hopping around and the point of that is that if you focus too much on one area and you get really really good at it and then maybe it's like beautiful and pristine and just perfect and then you go to do another area it's like crap <laughs> Like maybe you've set your expectations a little high for yourself and then it, you know, kind of fails you and you have this really good spot and then the rest is just not as uniform. If you bounce around a little bit, it helps to kind of keep everything roughly the same. I mean, obviously, if you, you're in a nice little groove, then go with it because it's not like, it's not like this is anything super professional or anything like that. So if you're going to mess up, this is just a sketch, so. But when I'm sketching things, I usually go over it a little bit lighter than I am when I'm finding the actual line I'm looking for. So like over here, I had kind of pulled it in when I was originally sketching it and I darkened the line where I feel like it absolutely should be on the outside. And I probably should have mentioned this before. So the pencil that I'm using is an H, which is like right in the middle between like hard and soft lead. So you're going to be having a little bit more range, but it's not gonna go super dark, which is good, because I don't want it to be super dark. This is just kind of an overlay, like I'm gonna go back over it afterward with color, and then the color should be the actual focus of it rather than the graphite. Um, let's see, the ring finger all the way down here. And if I'm looking at it, I can see areas where I should probably like extend the finger. If you look at where the fingers are sitting and you were to exclude the actual item itself, so excluding the hand and excluding the, the, the colored pencil, and I was just looking at the contour line over the top of it. I see it goes over, up around, up around, over here, and then straight down. The thumb actually isn't really involved in the outside line of this. And that's another way for you to kind of gauge. It's hard, it's hard to look at a drawing well, I'm sorry, the subject of a drawing without actually seeing the, the drawing itself. And sometimes you get focused on what should be here rather than what actually is in front of you. This is a good exercise to rather than focus on like, okay, well, I know that this is a finger. I know that this is a finger and this is where I want it to go. Focusing on the things that are a little bit more abstract, like I said, like the line above it all. Uh, see down here. This one is actually almost parallel. And I'm adding these joints in because it helps me out visually to see where my fingers are going. All right. So I've gotten most of this down. Oh, this is see, another reason why the model isn't, it's not gonna be perfect, but um, it doesn't have like the meat of the thumb in there. It's just so flat. So I'm gonna have to take some <laughs> creative liberties here and add it. Behind the thumb, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's actually a divot where the wood is so that the thumb will sit. And I will include that just cause it's a nice little shadow. That'll go back here. And my pencil isn't really the focus. I'm not gonna put too much emphasis on that, but it does go through here. 
and that will impact the shadows through here. About right about here. Another little fun fact too is how you're not supposed to touch the paper with your hand. And I'm just terrible about that. <laughs> I went out and I could have easily just used my easel and I decided, I'm like, I'm gonna get a drawing board. I'm gonna get a drawing table so that I can probably indulge myself and lean against it. <laughs> Awful. Um, all right, so this is actually out a little bit more. There we go. All right, so now that I've got it, gotten everything kind of mapped out, I've got my red and my green. And for the most part, you can kind of pick whichever red or green you want on your whole spectrum, especially if you buy one of the bigger packs of the Prismacolor. There's so many variants of different colors, so it's just it's entirely up to you. I'm not gonna lie, I went with whichever red and green were mostly sharpened because I was having so many troubles with my sharpener. Um, let's see, I've got crimson red and I've got apple green, which I don't think I've ever seen an apple this green. Um, don't know if I would actually eat an apple this green. That's kind of ridiculous. So, my green. This is my red. So if I was gonna be going over this, I would be focusing more on where the light's hitting on the, the figure and where the shadows are. So I already know that my shadows are gonna be on this side. And just for the sake of simplicity and the fact that I'm sketching, I'm not gonna go into the fact that yes, light bounces around and yes, you're gonna be able to see a little bit of the highlights on the underside of this in the shadow. That's a whole thing and I'd rather not go too in depth because I'm sure at some point in time I'm gonna have something specifically devoted to shading and I'm not gonna really bother with all that. So if you go through here, you'll see where all the shadows are. They're gonna be along the outside of the hand. You're gonna see them on the underside of the fingers, especially where it meets up with the pencil itself. The pencil, you know, the pencil's curved, so it's gonna have, the shadows are gonna follow the curve a little. Um, I'll darken it too, because as it gets closer, it's going to be a more rich shadow. Then, around here, under here, and along here. And because of the way that my light source is facing, it's actually facing head on onto the fingers themselves. So you're going to see actually less sh uh, shadow through here, even though you'd expect because of the overlapping that there'd be a little bit of shadow. And there is a little, but there's not all that much for the purpose of the drawing. So, oh, you know what? I actually forgot a spot here. If you see in here, there's like this whole space. This finger was just kind of not attached to anything for a little bit. Come back through here, add you. There we go. Okay, now it's not free floating. <laughs> I know anatomy, everything just kind of attaches where it wants. So the red is what is going to be facing most to the light. So as I mentioned before, anything that is warm is going to be advancing, cool is receding. So advancing is gonna mean it's gonna be in the highlight, it's gonna be what hits, what the light hits first. And a cool, which a cool color would be on this spectrum would be green, is going to be in the background, is going to be receding. That's going to hit the light last. So when I'm going through and I'm mapping out everywhere that needs to be in the shadow, I'm gonna go at it kind of light because one fun thing about complements is when you combine them, they kind of cancel each other out. So you end up having a neutral color right in the middle. And neutral colors are like brown, like those weird skin tones, like like some like yellow ochre, I would consider as a neutral color. And in order to have it truly be neutral, it would be right in the middle, like 50-50. But obviously, if you're using like a warmer red or maybe a cooler green, you're gonna have to make adjustments. You can see how in the middle they kind of like cancel each other out. So if I'm going at this a little bit lighter around here, when I bring everything together, it's going to blend nicer. But also too, if you're wanting to go at this in a more minimalist 
fashion, you can use these colors and leave the white underneath it to kind of create an extra highlight. So, really light here. Now everywhere where there's a joint that I've kind of squared off right here is gonna be green because that's all like super shadow. Hidden in there is that ball for the joint. So I'll kind of round it off a little. Also, I don't know if you care, but you can always add the thumbnails in there or even just like a hint of it. Little details like this aren't like a necessity, but it's nice because it helps to give direction. And when you're drawing things like that, that's, that's really important to see where these things go because like I mentioned before, like hands are really difficult to on their own anyway, but to help simplify things is to get everything going in the right direction. Is there, even though your hands are gonna contort in different ways, you know, what's comfortable and your brain is gonna know what makes sense and what doesn't. So visually, if you were to be looking at this later on, like, okay, well, this doesn't make sense. You'll know it was because maybe you didn't get quite right with the proportions or the angles. Let's see, so, another thing in down here, I've got a lot of light hitting right around here really really hard for me going through here not to treat the red like it's a shadow like I have to remember the green is where my shadows are when you are doing your shading whether or not you're using color or pencil try to go with the shape of the item you are drawing so this curves around here and I know too, it's, even though this is mostly flat, it still does have a little bit of depth to it. So it kind of comes up around here and that's where I'll stop my shadow. It doesn't need to be beautifully like flat and with your shading either, it make it messy. So this comes around. I actually have a tiny bit of shadow from this finger right up here. have a little bit of light through the fingers but it's very minor these are crazy dark it's almost entirely in shadow and to add a tiny bit of depth to it all you can go back over it with the red it does help to darken it a little Besides, I can see a tiny, tiny bit of light through the fingers. There we go. I was just thinking how, oh my goodness, I was so sick last week. Like, I had strep throat, which was horrible. <laughs> like, I don't think I've had strep throat since I was a kid, so I had no idea how to handle it. And I remember dealing with it when I was little and it wasn't nearly as bad as what I dealt with last week. Oh my goodness. Like I thought I had the flu. It was so bad, but um, yeah, so my voice is all raspy and I still feel like a tiny bit shaky from it all. Even with the antibiotics, you're still like, ugh. trying not to overdo it, but it's sometimes hard with certain colors. That is another reason why whenever you're coloring something or you're, you're doing something with colors, you probably say, um, you want to pick out a color that's going to work with whatever it is that you are drawing or painting in some cases, because your, whatever it is that you're drawing your subject, it's the color is going to add a mood to it. Now, obviously, like right now, it's a hand. It's not hands can have emotion, depending on the positioning, depending on you know whatever it's holding, etc. But right now, it's obviously it's just sketching, so it's not anything I'm going to put emphasis on. But if you were to be painting or drawing something that is meant to be sad, you're not going to want to put in like 
like bright colors or anything like that you might want to go with a different color scheme than something that's complementary because complementary colors they're two extremes so you're gonna have a lot of energy involved in it and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad but I mean in this case it's not really gonna matter as much but it just definitely doesn't make it easy in here where the joints are and I think I've kind of reached a point where I should probably go in and focus a little bit more on where there's highlights white but I guess that's not really exactly the words I'd want to use here. Huh? I'm going to add a little bit of red anywhere that I have any of the shadowing just to kind of make it a little bit darker. So like I said before going in really light is the trick here. This is really soft and you don't see as many of the harsh shadows around here. It's usually, even if, even with the harshest of shadows, there's still a little bit of a gradient between the light and the dark. Keep adding, building up layers. So everywhere that I did, let's, I want to add a little bit of highlight around it. and red I was just thinking like it looks so alien <laughs> like, it. another thing that it was just popping into my head was I remember in art school I had an art teacher she's like you want to make sure that whatever it is that you're drawing with you want to keep it sharp and that's true because if you end up just dulling it down and going over it the tooth of the paper which is just the the texture of the paper is going to show through so it's kind of like if you think of like coloring with crayon on paper or on like construction paper something that has a lot of tooth and you see like the the gaps between the crayon that's not something that you want when you're drawing or when you're using colored pencil especially is probably a better example um, so the sharper it is the more it's able to fill in between the gaps in the tooth of the paper but when you're doing it softly it sort of wears over time and it does make it a little bit easier to kind of go over and make your layers but if I was to go in and want to like fill in these little tiny pieces I would definitely need to sharpen my pencil you don't know if you can see it very well but it's getting kind of dull so I'm reaching a point where I think I'm pretty much done or at least I've gone as far as I can with this one Not as happy with it as I would like to be, but that's less because of the drawing and more because of it's just being a very rigid hand model. But otherwise though, you can kind of see where I'm going with all of it. I've got the basic direction of the fingers down. I've got the positioning right. I've got the proportions right for the most part, I think. Um, I'd probably like maybe the index finger to be a little bit smaller as far as all of this is concerned. And you know, I feel like I could probably make it a little darker around here to help kind of flatten it out a little more. I feel like the thumb is in the wrong position, even though I know for the most part it's not. I don't know. Sometimes your shadows and your shading can kind of bring out errors and then your brain doesn't really want to process where it actually is but all right so this is where I would say we'd probably stop with this one just to focus um, trying to think how I might want to do the positioning for the next one but yeah I, I would say this is probably where I would stop with this hand this is probably the most complicated as far as the hand 
drawings is gonna go just because of the fact that everything is curled up around itself. So I think the next pose that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have the hand open. All right, so I messed with the hand model a little, trying to find a pose that didn't look just so wooden. <laughs> like, somebody's gonna have to show me like a better hand model than this because this is just sad. Um, Maybe down the road when we're doing one of those figure drawing ones, I can focus on hand gestures because I really do enjoy drawing hands. Like they're so, they're not, they're not easy for me, but at the same time, it's fun to just kind of like, just ah, there's a hand. <laughs> so in this one, I had the hand opened up. So that way I could see, you know, the fingers and how they look in relation to each other. Um, so just like I did with the last one, I'll start down here, because I always like starting around the wrist. Um, all right, so it comes up this way. I know that it's gonna go up pretty high. So I wanna make sure I have enough room on my page when I'm drawing it. All right, so forgive me if I'm putting my hand in the way of everything. Sometimes I have to kind of like move around a little bit to get the right angles. Another reason you're not supposed to rest your hand on your paper, because if I had a drawing all the way up here, I would be getting my hand all sorts of dirty and you'd see smudges everywhere. It's pretty unprofessional. So if you can, you're supposed to be drawing like far away. I can't, I just, I just can't. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> so, okay, right, so let's see here. This comes up this way, the thumb is, more or less around here and visually I'm trying to kind of like see where the light is hitting it to see how the shape is moving I see it kind of coming up this way and it kind of comes down a little bit this way so I'm not keeping this obviously I'm gonna end up going over everything with color in a little bit but that's gonna tell me where I'm gonna need to put my color after a little bit so let's get this up here a little better in this pose that divot I was talking about it kind of comes in and up a little um, tiny little nubby thumb <laughs> his fingers are so long the thumb just seems so short and sad um, go. this finger is launching backward a little and I can see where the base of the hand is kind of connected with the joint of the finger. So I'll add that just for the sake of, I don't know, remembering that it's not real. <laughs> um, the shape leaning backward is a little odd. So I'm trying to get the angle right. And I see how it kind of comes back around here and it's all leaning back. And that seems actually about right. Adding that joint will help me with figuring out where everything should be also. It comes up right about here. I think that's right. Alright, and then the, it visually it's going to kind of match up along with where the thumbnail is on the thumb. So it's right about here. Give or take depending on how I'm moving. <laughs> with myself. I'm going to hop over here. I see it's going to come out a little bit this way. Finger. There's going to be a finger here. And then I can't really see the bottom joint right here where it connects. So I'll put that up this way. And then there's going to be a joint in here. And I know that this leans out just a tiny bit. And then I've got the curve. Ugh. another thing to kind of keep in mind with hands they are so funky like also this particular one I should <laughs> this one is gonna be in a, an extra weird position but the angle of the hands toward you you've got the fingers kind of coming at you and it's going to adjust the proportions a little bit 
you want to keep that in mind. Like I'm trying to do, but like I said, hands are hands are a thing. All right, so this is kind of coming out this way. It's leaning against this finger. God, the hand is just. I might have to bring this out a little more. So let's see here. It kind of comes down like this. So if I'm doing that, then the fingertip should be right about right about here, actually. Can you see how I did that? It, it's um, I'm trying to map out where the angle is with the hand. So like I see that the actual top of the hand right here, kind of going in this direction. Let's see where the fingers are kind of falling this way. So I want to make sure, because it, it does help out if you can see where the line is, where if you can make these kind of visual comparisons, it helps it a little bit when it comes to drawing them to make sure you're putting these things in the right directions. Alright, so. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, so whenever I'm drawing, I like to kind of keep things in like a circular kind of sketch. So I'm able to manipulate it a little bit easier in circles rather than in lines. Like some people will sketch in lines and I like to make it a little bit more organic. Let's bring this over here. Focus on each individual section. Okay, sad thumb. I, can, I do have the um, lines over the top there. This one. Not in like a entirely detrimental way, just meaning the palm of the hand for my wooden model is a lot more narrow than a normal hand would be. And excluding the major muscles in the hand that build up over time, it's kind of almost like a really large baby hand and it's kind of creepy. There's no real muscle mass that's built up that you get from drawing, that you get from texting, or that you get from just anything that you do with your hands. Um, all right, so for the most part, I've had to kind of adjust. Cause like I know that there's gonna be, on a normal hand, like I know that there's gonna be shadow in here. I'm gonna have to make my own here. That's kind of weird. Okay. So the colors that I chose for this complementary color scheme, I decided to do blue and orange. So the blue that I chose is peacock blue, which is pretty much dead on, huh? Um, and then I've got, what are you? Pale vermilion for my orange. Again, okay, well, uh, maybe not entirely again. In this case, Yes, I chose colored pencils that were already sharpened for the most part, but I also wanted it because I really like these two colors together. Like this isn't a fully saturated blue because it looks a little bit grayer than you would have, like maybe something that was just like pure just blue. And it seems to complement the orange, which is extra saturated. So I like the, the contrast there. So I'm hoping that maybe my color can fix these areas in the drawing that I'm not happy with. There are plenty of areas that it just looks strange to me and I can't quite figure out why. Aside from the fact, like, again, this is kind of unnatural. But... So, kind of doing what I did on the last one, which is kind of mapping out exactly where I want everything to be as far as my highlights and my shadow. 
the orange is my warm color in this drawing and so the warm colors are going to be advancing and I've got that in the foreground where all of my lights hitting actually that one's gonna kind of come around a little bit so because of the shape of each finger lights hitting a lot of area and a lot of it is right around here and the bulk of the finger pads. But everywhere where there's the joint, it kind of recedes a little bit. So I'm trying to avoid that when I'm coming through with my highlights. And right here, this is where I attempted to try and give it a little bit of muscle. It's sad. Unmuscular. <laughs> And okay, so I'll come back around here and I will add a little bit of detail and shading. So these little joints, I don't know if you guys can see the joints there, where the screws are. Pull up the shadow from the other side. Bring it in. I'm going pretty quick, but mostly because I know I'm going to end up going over it again and again. Because the more layers that you get with these things, the better it turns out. You're able to kind of manipulate it a little bit more the more you go over it. Obviously, you don't want to do it too much because if you go over it too many times, you end up kind of being a little counterproductive. But I know that. So when I was in. Uh, high school I took AP portfolio and there were a lot of projects that I would just get so sucked in on and I would actually need somebody to come back and say like okay okay I think you're done so you just you get so focused and if you get to that point you need somebody to tell you no because you're gonna end up ruining it I feel like in these cases it's like Tony you should tell me when I should stop and overdone it. <laughs> I, need, I need an adult. <laughs> so, goes to my joints. This one's fun. Like, the other drawing was fun, too, because I'm drawing something a little bit more compact, but this is fun because it's all spread out, and I'm able to really focus on the fingers like I wasn't able to in the previous drawing. So in here, there's a little bit of shadow between the fingers, not too much. The majority of it's actually on this side, which I should probably add a little bit more leading up this way. It's going to be a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in the middle, but since it's facing the light, there's such a small amount that I might have even overdone it there by adding what I did. Go over a little. You know, in some areas I am going to leave a little bit of white because I don't want it to be too... I don't want it to be too orange. If you go over it too much, it ends up making it look like the skin tone is orange and that is not necessarily the goal here. So. Alright, so this last finger I'm looking at it and there's actually more shadow on the top of it than the other ones because of its angle toward the light. I'm going to pull that down the top. So if I'm going to go back through and focus a little bit more on any of the details, I would look at where the joints are here. There's a ball in each one of these and it's... Here it a little. There we go. I see it. 
See, I think that this finger is what's kind of throwing everything off here. These ones, because the angle looks like it's facing more this way than it is this way, and that's not accurate. See, adding in these tiny little details can make a difference. one would be more or less finished. I don't see anywhere that I would go over that wouldn't just kind of start to screw it up a little bit. But um, if you can see, I can I can see from doing the color areas that I would have liked to have mapped out a little bit better when I was sketching first. Like for example, I think that if I were to have given a little bit more attention to where the fingers are sitting on top of the hand, that would have helped me a little bit with my proportioning. See, this needed to come down a little bit. And the purpose of sketching is is learning. You know, you I mean, you can do the same thing over and over and over again, and it's going to help you with muscle memory, but it's always going to come out different with every time. So the best that you can do is try to learn from your mistakes and try to remember it for next time. So in this one, though, I wouldn't say that it's a total loss as far as you know. I mean, it looks like what I drew, it looks like the model, but I think that I could still do better. And that's good, like you don't wanna, you wanna be honest with yourself about what you're drawing. Like I'm never gonna go through and be like, okay, this is done, I'm good. Apex, just nowhere to go from here. All right, guys, so this has been Real People Painting, uh, drawing these hands. This was my favorite, I think, between the two that we drew. Um, so if you liked what you saw today, um, hit like, subscribe, hit the bell, um, and we will see you next time. Okay, thanks.